in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. What follows is a success story about the attainment of fame, money, and the love of women. About running faster, reaching out further, and grasping more. The running and the reaching and the grasping are supposed to bring success. But now and then, perhaps more often than we know, they can also bring horror. So perhaps this is not a success story at all. Perhaps it is a tale of horror. Our mystery drama, The Image, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Norman Rose and William Redfield. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Listerine Lozenges. I'll be back shortly with Act One. No one in this tale is poor or sick or obscure or friendless or unloved. Our central character, Evan Elliott, is rich. He is famous. He is in perfect health. He is loved by a beautiful woman and treasured by a loyal friend. Which is where our story begins. My friendship with Evan started a long time ago. Before he'd had anything published, he brought me his first book because nobody else, frankly, would touch it. I said I'd handle it because I didn't have much of anything else to do. And I sold it to the first publisher I sent it to. And it was a smash. Not just a hit, not just a bestseller, a smash. Everybody that could read bought a copy. Well, the rest is history. He was my client, I was his agent, and together we made money. But over and above and beyond all that, we were friends. For 15 years, the day he busted into my office. Billy! I have. Oh, buddy, have I got news for you. You finished a new book. Huh? I'm getting married. You're getting... Well, how about that? Congratulations. Billy boy, I am marrying Christine Dewar. <laughs> the, the Christine Dewar? The one and only. The one they call the richest girl in the world? That Christine Dewar? That's the girl. Beautiful, too. I saw a picture of her once. Well, she doesn't like publicity, but I'll change all that. We'll get married the day before the new book comes out. That'll give authenticity to everything I've written about the ultra-rich. You know, the way they live and conduct themselves. Everybody will believe it because they'll figure that I know. They'll eat it up. You'll ask Doris and me to the wedding, I trust. I want to talk to you about the wedding. Um, would it be better to have a big cathedral type of wedding, you know, or just to sneak off to a justice of the peace? Well, that's up to the lady, isn't it? Well, she's so infatuated with my machismo, she'll walk down any aisle, road, street, or cow path I choose. Yes, I don't know how you do it, I swear. Billy, really, this book's got to be a blockbuster. The biggest yet. You can't afford to slip in this business. You have to top yourself every time. And that is hard. Very hard. What's that got to do with getting married? Billy... Billy, I am not just a writer. You see, by now, I'm a celebrity. People aren't just interested in what I write. They're interested in me, what I do, how I live. Oh, yes, I suppose. And I think that we'll... Yeah, we'll run away and get married, so it'll come as a complete surprise, and the press will pick it up and sensationalize it. Now, you'll set up the interviews, and later on, maybe we can arrange for a picture spread. Yeah, sure. Ev, wait a minute. Do you... Do you love this girl? Love her? <laughs> Certainly I love her. What a crazy question. It all went off just the way he planned it. The book hit the stores. The next day, Evan and Christine were married in a broken-down office across the river with Doris and me for witnesses. I leaked it to the media, so they turned out in full force. Evan wore the old familiar blue jeans. Christine wore blue jeans, too. But Doris said they were custom-made and... Cost a mint. Why do I feel like she's living underwater? Like she's got a mouth full of seaweed. As time passed, Christine began to look as though she'd been left underwater for a long time. I don't know, she got thinner and thinner and paler and paler. The way she talked or didn't talk got stranger and stranger. Billy, 
I'm worried about that girl. Oh, come on. Chris is all right. I think we should keep an eye on her. She loves him. She worships him. That's a whole different thing. You put somebody on a pedestal the way she's put him, you're always looking up. Not at. Up. And to look up, you have to be down. Must be nice to be looked up to. Worshipped. I look at you. And I love you. Well, Ev loves Chris. Love? She's part of the image, and that's all she'll ever be. What image? Oh, good grief, Billy. You've known Evan Elliott longer than I have. Don't you know he's building an image? First it was just the successful writer. No, that's not an image. He did that. Then it was the big man about town. Go to all the parties. Then sell a book to the movies. Do the whole Hollywood scene. Have a big publicized thing with a gorgeous movie actress. Then he got engaged to a duchess. Well, I don't see what's so wrong with any of those things. The reasons are wrong. He's so scared he won't make it. But, darling, he has made it. If anybody's made it, he has. Why don't you ask him? I will bet you he'll say no. Not yet, he'd say. Not quite yet. Just give me a few more years, just a few years more, and I'll have it all. Then everybody will worship me, and I can start feeling good about myself. Oh, Doris, come on. You just don't know him at all. Oh, I know him. And I know you. You've put him on a pedestal, too. Where would I be without Evan? I owe everything to him. He's my best friend and I'm his. There's nothing could bust up our friendship, Doris, so don't try. Now, I'm warning you. Don't try. Well, anyway, we'll have them over for dinner. All right? All right. Sure. It was never too comfortable having them for dinner. Or going to their place either. I never knew just why. Doris didn't always use too much tact talking to Evan. And Christine, well, Doris was right about that. There was something strange about Christine. And whatever it was, it was getting stranger. Conversation was rough going all through dinner. And afterward, having coffee in the living room, it didn't get any easier. Well, brandy, anyone? We have cognac. Cointreau, creme de menthe, uh, both green and white. Oh, I think I'd like You to... wouldn't like anything. Well, I, I just thought... Uh, don't, light... don't, don't think. Just sit there and look beautiful. I guess I don't want anything. Um, making progress on the new book, Ev? Mm, some. Oh, he's done a lot. How would you know? Well, I saw... You read what I've written? No. You sneaked I... in and read it? No. I don't let anybody do that. I didn't read it. I just saw a lot of pages with typing on them. I didn't read any of it. I really didn't, Evan. You know I wouldn't do anything like that. Well, what if she did? I mean, what's the big deal? My wife is not a critic. I love what you write. I do. I do. I love what you write. There you are, you see. You are a critic. <laughs> a critic is very emotional tonight. Uh, she's going to have a baby. Chris! You mean it? Oh, that... That is oh, great. Oh, it's wonderful. Hey, aren't you happy about it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on. We're going home. Oh, not yet. Right I now. Will. Chris, get your things. I will. I will. Hey, wait a minute. You plan a bomb in our laps and then you run off. What for? I want to get her home. Chris, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'll see you tomorrow, Billy. I'll drop around to the office. Yeah, good night, Chris. It's wonderful about the baby. Thank you both. Come on. C Chris, I'll talk to you. T t well, that was what you might call an abrupt departure. Yeah. I don't know. Ev was kind of rough on Christine tonight. Don't tell me the pedestal is beginning to rock. Don't tell me the image is getting tarnished. Now, Doris, don't be crude. Evan is my friend. As long as he stays on the pedestal, Billy. Once he comes down from there. Oh, oh watch out. Doris does get feelings about things. You know, the first ten years we were married, I used to make fun of her and her feelings. The last few years I've stopped because most of her feelings turned out to be right. But I drew the line at what she said about Evan. I felt... I felt I was privileged to be Evan's friend. Being his friend was the most important thing in my life. The most... Well, I, I mean, next to Doris, of course. Well, anyway, next morning, Ev came to my office. 
Boy, you certainly took off in a hurry last night. Well, I had to get Christine home. When's the big event, huh? Well, I mean, when is she going to have the baby? Oh, well, that's what I have to talk to you about. Now, look, Billy, I want you to arrange it for me. What? Arrange what? What do you mean, arrange? Because we don't seem to be able to create one of our own. That's why. Oh. Are you sure? Oh, we've been trying long enough, so there's got to be something wrong. Oh, well, well, what? I mean, have you been to doctors? Christine has been to that gynecologist of hers who gives me the creeps. Well, what did he say? He says there's nothing wrong with her. Well, have you seen anyone? Me? There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah, but I don't see why... I mean, Evan, look, how do I come into this? If you're both all right, it's a problem you can solve in time. I don't want in time. I want a child right now, a child. Now, what do you want to do, let me down? Can't you understand plain English? I want you to help me to arrange it. But I can't... Oh. Oh, oh, oh you mean you want to adopt? Me? Adopt a child? No, no, no. I want this child to be mine. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Evan, that's not fair to the kid or, or to adoption, which can work... I mean, it can work beautifully for anyone. Well, let it work for them, not for me. I want mine. And most of all, I need it right now. Need what? For Chris to be pregnant. Why? Why do you need it? Why? Why? Because there is interest in me. Billy in me and everything that I do. Don't you know that? Good Lord, after all those years with me, don't you have the slightest idea what it means to be a celebrity? To have celebrity status? Well, I... I'm sorry. I, ne- I, I, I never thought about well, it. Well, think about it. I am the country's foremost writer. But that is not all that I am. I am a public figure. Millions of people are fascinated by me and everything that happens to me. And right now, what I need is to be a father. Yes, it'll be a whole new thing. You mean like a... a kind of image? Yes, if you want to call it that. Well... I don't know, Evan. You got me going. I don't quite see what If I had to spell it out for you, doesn't Doris have a doctor? Yes. Well, then, maybe you or she could introduce Christine to him and have them work it out. Fine. Work out what? The timing. The making it happen. Look, this is the space age. If it can't be natural, there's an artificial way of having a child. But still a child of my own. He's got to be mine. Have you discussed this with Christine? Is it what she wants? She'll want it. You leave that up to me. All right. If you're sure you want to go through with this, I'll I'll, I'll ask Doris and see what she can suggest. If you're sure. I told you. Can't you understand how much I need it? Well, I have to tell you, I... I was shocked. Doris and I had never had any children. I, I don't know if we really wanted to of... Of course, when we didn't, we just, well, we accepted it and went on the way we were, which had always been a pretty good way to go. We loved each other. We were happy. We were willing to leave it to fate. Why couldn't Evan, I wondered? Still, I I was Evan's best friend, and I'd, I'd promised to speak to Doris, and I did. No, I won't have any part of it, do you understand? And you shouldn't either. Uh, Doris, darling, I'm his friend. I'm his best you friend. You are not his friend. You're his satellite. He's the sun and you revolve around him. You live in his light and you walk in his shadow. You're just like Christine. That's not friendship and that's not love. You're followers, the both of you. He's the prince and you're his humble attendant. That's not fair, it's darling. It's fair and it's accurate. It, it, look, just leave me out of it completely. I am not going to help him do his dirty work. I'm not going to promote this image of himself he's building. Let him work on it by himself and leave me out of it. What is an image? Offhand, we should describe it as the appearance we would like to present to others. The way we would like to be perceived. Having little or nothing to do with what we are. The dictionary puts it more concisely when it says, Image is an imitation of a person. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. We were discussing the word image, and we picked the simplest of definitions, an imitation of a person. 
But follow the dictionary, and its meanings reach deeper than that. For example, at random, a counterpart. For example, that child is the image of his mother. Or, more importantly, a symbol or an emblem. Or finally, an embodiment, such as God created man in his own image. All of which serves to explain why a reluctant Billy, friend, agent, and alter ego of a man he considered a towering genius, went home at his master's command to seek his wife's assistance. I am not going to help Evan build his image. Darling, wait a minute. You keep saying image, image. What image? The one he has been working on all of his life. And now he's decided what the image needs is a child, and he wants it now. Well, he's, he, he's getting pretty well past 40. He is well into his 50s, and you know it. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. I forget the years are passing, and I, 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 but I can understand him better remembering. Are you trying to tell me you're sorry we didn't have children? Oh, no, 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 honey, no. We're, we're fine just the way we are. But look, Doris, you won't help me out on this. I mean find out how you get a thing like that done. I don't have the foggiest, do you? Not the remotest. You won't call uh, Dr. What's-His-Name? No, I won't. Well, all you'd have to do would be to get the information, then you give it to me and I give it to Ev, and that's the end of it. No. Okay, well, give me the name of your doctor, then. No. Doris, I promise. No, no, and no. All right. He's not the only doctor in town. I'll find somebody else. I don't know why you won't help me out. Maybe I'm jealous. Jealous? Of what? Of who? Of you. And the way you feel about Evan. Doris? Jealous? Ridiculous. I must certainly be, if not the most, as faithful a husband as any woman ever had. I mean, Doris and I weren't just married. We were friends, companions, as well as lovers. We had a true togetherness. Oh, except with someone that's out of the mold above and beyond everyone as a genius like Evan, you can't rationalize a Dylan Thomas, a James Joyce. You either accept them or reject them. Doris rejected him, but Evan, I could not reject. So, well, anyway, it wasn't hard. I found him as doctor and called him to tell him. Good. You're a good guy, Billy. I'll have Chris in his office tomorrow. With you? Oh, not me. No need for me. You mean you won't go with Chris? My presence isn't needed. For what? It's her problem, not mine. Oh, Evan, won't she expect you to go with her? Well, I, I thought about that and decided no. You see, it uh, might get out to the press. What? That we're planning a child. It's not time to release that yet. Later, much later, I might do a piece on it. Why? You're my friend. I take your word for everything. You take Chris there tomorrow morning. Oh, come on. Let's get it over with. I don't know why I went along with him, but I did. If I'd have known, but I didn't. All I knew was he was my friend. So I made the arrangements, and sure enough, the next morning, Chris showed up. Chris, you know... You don't have to go through with this. Yes, I do. Evan said you wanted to. Did he say that? Well, practically. Well, I'm, yeah, yeah, he practically said that. But, but you don't have to do it. It's your life. My life is with him. I don't have any other life. Evan is the one big happening in my whole dumb existence. You're very loyal, aren't you? Well, of course I am. And besides, I'd like to have a baby. It would be the second big happening in my life. Oh, I... Chris, I just wish you looked, well, happier. Maybe later I'll get happy. Let's go, shall we? If you say so. I say so. The baby was born nine months later. And they named him William after me. Well, that pleased me, because I'd gone through a lot with Evan. Doris was kind of difficult about the whole thing. She was getting to really hate Ev, calling him a, a fake, a phony. But 
she'd always liked Christine. And we used to babysit with William now and then, and Doris got really fond of the boy. And then came the bombshell. Doris and I were sitting at home one evening. Uh, Ev! Well, hello. Who is it, honey? Uh, it's Evan. Uh, come on in. Evan. I'm not disturbing you, am I? No, no, no. No, no. We were just sitting around. Well, uh, what brings you out all Hello, the... Doris. Hello, Evan. Um, do you want a drink or anything? No, thanks. Well, sit down, why don't you? I've got something to tell you. Um, want me to clear out? You better stay. I don't mind. No, no. Stay. What's up, Ev? Christine told me something tonight. She said she never went to the doctor with you, Billy. But she did. I drove her there myself. She never went through with it. She said that? That's what she said. Maybe you better tell us the whole thing, Evan. We were sitting around after dinner, and I got curious all of a sudden about the whole procedure. You mean you'd never asked you before? I never wanted to know before. You'd think she'd want to tell you. Well, she brought it up once or twice, but I wasn't ready to hear it. But if she wanted to tell you... Tonight, I was ready, so I asked to claim out how it was. Why do you want to know? You never wanted to know before. Well, I'm thinking of writing about it. I need to know the details. Writing about it? Publishing? Well, not right now. Maybe never, I don't know. But it would make a fascinating piece. All the psychological ramifications. Whose ramifications? Whose psychology? Knowing I wasn't the father. Who said you weren't? You mean, it worked? What we couldn't achieve together was made a reality in a lab? You asked me to go. I went. I did what you told me to do. I got pregnant. I had the baby. The baby's here. I love the baby. I love you. Yeah. But to write about it, I need all your thoughts, your feelings. You never wanted to know my feelings before. Why now? I'm a writer. Feelings are what I deal in. Anybody's feelings? Anybody that I'm interested in. And right now, I'm interested in yours. But it's as though you're feeding off me, eating me up little by little. <laughs> That's nonsense. Now, come on. Tell me what happened. Start at the beginning. A year ago, you went to the doctor's office. Billy drove you. When I got there, Billy said I didn't have to go through with it. If I didn't want to. But I said I wanted to. Well, that's right, Ev. That's all true. We had quite a talk about it, and when we got there, I told her again that it was up to her. It was her decision, her life. That she didn't have to do it if she didn't want to. But, I mean, she must have told you all about that. She did. And she said she wouldn't let you go inside the building with her. She didn't even want me to wait for her. She said she'd take a taxi home, but I knew she wouldn't really want that, so I waited. And then what happened? When I got inside, what I did first was to buy some cigarettes. Cigarettes? You don't smoke. <laughs> I was nervous. Oh, yes, sure. Naturally. I lit a cigarette and I started to smoke it, but it made me feel sick. And somebody came over and asked me, was I all right? And I said, yes, but could I go to the ladies' room and where was it? And they told me, and I went there, but, but I never smoked the cigarette. I just stood for a long time and looked at myself in the mirror. And you know what I thought? What did you think? I thought... I'm married to the greatest writer in the world, the most wonderful man, and, and I'm not worthy of him. But I'll never let him down. I know every curve of his body and the warmth and the drive of him. And I cannot accept anything programmed by a machine. If I cannot produce a baby for him, I'll die. And I should die. Because it the only thing I have to offer as a woman to make him immortal. And uh, I was ashamed, and I, I, 
I ran out. I ran to the nearest bar. A drink was more important than what you had to do? It gave me courage for what I had to do. Not one drink. Quite a few. I... I brought you a child, as you asked for. You mean... I mean that... There was a man at the bar. I suppose there's always a man at the bar. And I used him far more than he ever dreamed he was using me. How could you? He was a human being. At least he was a human being. Do you mind telling me who he was? I would mind very much. One of your society boyfriends, huh? You don't know anybody else. Yes, that's that's who it must have been. All right, which one? Come on. Tell me. Christine, tell me who it was. No, I won't. I'll never tell. Uh, oh! Chris? Christine! I... Billy, I, I hit her. Not not very hard, really. More of a slap, but, but she fell down. She hit her head against something. She... Billy... She's dead. Of course, they convicted him. He didn't put up any defense. He really didn't have any. He didn't seem to want any. He said his wife had told him the child wasn't his and he'd hit her. Nobody blamed him. Everybody sympathized. His books sold like crazy, even the early ones. They gave him two to five years for involuntary manslaughter. The last time I saw him before they led him away, he said, They tell me I can have a tape recorder, Billy, in my cell. All right, I'll bring you one. I may do a book on prison life. Oh, it'll be a smash. He was still my friend. I felt sorry for him, even though he didn't act like he needed my sympathy. All Doris said was... His whole problem, he couldn't produce a child. That sure didn't fit into the image. Yes, a tale of horror. Tell me, have you ever been alone and depressed in some public place, a restaurant, a park? And have you looked around at the other people and felt certain that they all, all of them, were happy and content and leading exciting, wonderful lives, while you... Be very careful of such feelings. They are most unreliable. We'll return shortly with Act Three. Evan Elliott has gone to jail for two to five years. Involuntary manslaughter. He struck his wife when she refused to name the father of her child. We continue our story as Evan is visited in his cell by his agent and closest friend. Hi, Ev. Hi, Billy. You look great. <laughs> I do, don't I? Yeah. yeah. I was just looking at myself in the mirror when you showed up. I look better than I've looked in years. It's amazing. You feel good? Marvelous. You? Oh, fine. fine. Doris? Great. Uh, the baby's fine, too. Good. Uh, Christine's folks were perfectly willing to have the boy live with us. Why shouldn't they be? Trophy snob? No, 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 no. They were really concerned uh, the, about the baby, I mean. Snob's just the same. I know him. You don't. Oh. Uh, have you tried out the tape recorder? No, not yet. Uh, let me know if it works okay. If not, I'll get you another one. Well, I haven't had anything to write about. I thought you were going to do a book on prison life. Well, you see, this is a minimum security prison. Nobody wants to read about model prisoners and all that. They want vicious convicts, rotten food, foul language. Here you mind your manners, and they mind theirs, and everybody gets along. Might be interesting at that. I doubt it. Ev, can I ask you something? Sure, ask away. Uh, Doris was wondering, and not that it's any of her business or mine either. Wondering what? Well... At your trial, you left out the part about the possibility that the child could have been produced medically by artificial means. Oh? Uh-huh. Did I? Well, what difference? Well, without that, it looked as though Christine was a girl who played around. Huh. You know, I, I never thought of that. And we all know she wasn't. Well, why didn't you mention it at the time? Well... 
tell you the truth, I didn't think about it till Doris brought it up. Pity she didn't bring it up sooner. By that time, the trial was over. Yeah, well, just as well. It wouldn't have fitted into the scenario. It would have been a false note, all wrong. I guess so. What you just said, making it look like Chris was some kind of a tramp. You know, that didn't occur to me. You may be right. I might do something about that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, old buddy. Well, I just thought I'd mention it. Dollars thought I should. I'll tell you what. Um, I'll do a book. A book about what? About Christine, dummy. Her whole story, start to finish. She told me the story of her life practically from the day she was born. And some miserable life it was, too. Talk about your poor little rich girls. She never had a moment that wasn't dull until she met me, yeah. And I put in all her problems about having a child and how she was incapable with me. She had to go to a doctor to have it done. Oh, Billy, it'll play. I know it will. Now, look, uh, clear out, will you, kid? i I, I got to get this on tape. I watched him get out the tape recorder, set the cartridge, and turn the thing on. He'd already forgotten I'd ever been there. All the way home, I wondered if I should tell Doris what had gone on in the cell. I hadn't even told her I was going to visit Ev. Because, frankly, it was very hard for me to talk to her about him. By now, she... Well, she really hated him. Not for any one specific thing he'd done. She just hated him for what he was. She called him the image maker. I'm home, Doris. I'll be right there. Baby all right? Mm-hmm. Fine. Still had a hard day? No. No. Not really. What'd you do? I saw Ev today. How is he? Well, Dara, she wouldn't believe it, but he looks great. When I walked in, he was looking at himself in the mirror, and he said so himself. He never looked better. Not bragging or anything. He just... <laughs> he really did. He just looked great. Yeah? So? Well, we got to talking. He asked for you. That's nice. I said, how's the tape recorder working? And he said he hadn't tried it out yet. Then I brought up... You know, what you said about his leaving out everything about trying to have a child artificially. I bet he never even told his lawyer. Well, I don't know that, but he said he hadn't brought it up at the trial because it didn't seem like the right place for it. Or the right time. But then I said maybe people would get the idea that Chris was a... Well, you know, that she played around and that got him interested. Oh, well, of course. He's not going to have anybody thinking any woman would be unfaithful to him. No, darling, no. I, I think he was really concerned. Is, um... Is he going to mention anywhere the name of the child's father? Well, he doesn't know who the real father is, so he can't very well put it in the book. I guess not. He thinks it was some old bow of hers. But we know better. Don't we, Billy? What? We know better, you and I. Doris, what are you talking about? We know who the real father is. We do? Who? You. What makes you say a thing like that? Oh, we've been married almost 20 years. Doris, please, I never, never... Do you want me to tell you what happened? If you think you know. When... When Christine came out of that building, she got into your car, didn't she? And she was crying, right? Go on. She cried all the way home. And you tried to tell her Evan would understand she couldn't go through with it. Am I right? I said that, yeah. But she said no. He expected a child from her. He'd make her go back to that place. Am I still right? Yeah, yeah. That's about uh, what she said. And when you got to her house, she begged you to come inside with her. Didn't she? Dara, she... Uh, Did uh, she? I... Yes. And at first you said no. Well, I, I, I didn't really want to. I, no? I swear. Dara, I swear to you. But she was crying and carrying on. And I... she was Evan's wife. What? That was the thing that finally got you upstairs. That she was Evan's wife. 
that this was one more way to get close to Evan. As close as possible without actual... Now, hold it. Hold it right there. Don't go saying things you'll be sorry for. In a crazy kind of way, you've been in love with Evan for years. Now, you're out of your mind. I mean, I... I... I admire him, sure, you but admire I... admire him. You'd like to be like him. You'd like to have his talent, his money, his fame. You couldn't have any of those things. But you could have his wife. And you did. For two weeks, I hated Doris. I didn't talk to her. And then, one day... Doris... Yes, Billy? You know, uh, with Christine, that one time, that was the only time since we got married. I know that. I don't think I could go on living without you. I don't think you'll have to. Next day, I went to see Evan in his cell. I didn't know what I was going to say to him or how I was going to say it. Hello, Ev. Oh. Hi there, Billy. I was just looking to see if I need a shave. (laughs) Looks like I do. I've been working so hard, I forgot to take time out. Working on the book about Christine? Yeah. Oh, it's a winner. I know it. Look, I I, I want to play you the opening. Wait till I rewind this thing. Evan, I've got something to tell you. Yeah? I'm the father of Christine's child. You? I waited... And drove her away from the doctors. She was upset, shaky, shattered, really, because she felt she'd failed you. She she wanted a drink. I I wasn't averse myself. We uh, went to a bar. We had our drinks. Too many. We, uh, well, we, we commiserated with each other in a way you could never understand. And, and, and then I drove her home. And that's all? No. There was a moment of... Now, look, laugh if you want. There was a moment of truth when we got there. When, nakedly, she was terrified of facing you and and admitting what she had failed to do. And and when I... Well, don't stop now. All right, if you will have it, when I wondered after all my years if I could just for once do something originally by myself, if not for myself, and somehow it happened, and I did. Well, what do you know? I... I thought I should tell you. You? I, I hope you won't put it in the book. Doris hopes you won't, on, you, you know, on account of the baby. Uh, I'll have to think about it. We thought we could adopt the baby someday. Billy, listen to this. Ev, do you have to? Shh. Now you listen. She wore her money like a shroud. She was immobile inside her huge fortune, as though entombed in it. How's that for an opening? Ev, please. Well, it gets better. She looked helpless and quiescent, like a chrysalis within a cocoon, taking no nourishment and seeming to need none. Ev, really, Listen, I would you... will you? She'd been born into this pupil state of opulence. A man absolutely absorbed in his own words. He didn't seem like a man at all, more like a freak. A monster building an image of himself to put on display. I couldn't believe in him at all. And I knew I couldn't be his friend anymore. I wasn't sure I ever had been. Inside the thick membrane of her enormous wealth, she had never stirred or made the least movement to free herself. I don't think he noticed when I left. The tape droned on as I walked. And the sound of his voice was the last thing I heard. thought about him, looking at his own face, listening to his own voice, absolutely indifferent to other faces, other voices, other lives. He'd built a cell within a cell, and he seemed content. Four 
who is more horrible than the man who has no thought or feeling for anyone but himself? Who lives in a world of his own devising, where he manipulates people and events solely to aggrandize himself? And what is more horrible than his fate? To live quite apart from his fellow men, doomed forever to study his own face, listen to his own voice, feel no pulse, but his own. That is to have no life at all. I'll be back shortly. I leave you with this warning. Beware the image makers, those who carefully construct imitations of themselves for you to admire and adore. The Bible says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Yes, and most particularly, when the image you make is the image of yourself. Our cast included Norman Rose, William Redfield, Terry Keene, and Marion Seldes. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Listerine Lozenges. And Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.